What's going on, everybody? This is your favorite host, Jerome Moore of Deep Dish Conversations, and we have an amazing guest today. I know we are, I always say we got an amazing guest, but today this is a historical guest that we have. We have Councilwoman Sandra. And I'll make sure I get this right, Sandra. Get, okay. I want to. I want to get the. I want to get the. You know, uh, the Latino. Uh, you know, accent down. Sepulveda. Yes, Sepulveda. Sepulveda. Yeah. Sandra Sepulveda. And we were just talking like off the camera, like how my Spanish could be a, a lot better since I've lived in like Costa Rica and Paraguay for a number of years. And so, I'm going to work on that. And you should too. Uh, what's going on, Sandra? How you doing? I'm making it. I'm making it. Thank you for, for inviting me. Look, if, if you all don't know, you know, our council members are very busy here in Nashville <laughs> this time of year. So <laughs> I am, I am, it's a, my pleasure to, to, to have you and I'm glad that you was able to make the time to be a part of this. Just talk a little bit, eat some great pizza. Yeah, I'm excited about the pizza. Yes, everybody's always excited. I don't even know if it's me. Maybe it's just the pizza that people are coming to just really eat. And I'm just kind of like, you know, like one of those, like a bargaining tool, just something that comes along the with pizza the pizza. And the <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so, um, Sandra, you, let, let, I want to go into your story just a little bit, but I know people could, could Google you yeah. and, and, and figure out all like the stuff. But when I, when, when I introduce you, you know, you are, you know, you are history, right? You are the first. And, um, and I want to clarify this too, as a, um, Latina, is it is it proper to say Latinx, Latina, Hispanic? I want to clear that because I think, you know, identity politics is like a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, living outside the country in um, Latino uh, places. Like, I've never heard the word Latinx since I came back to the United States. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a newish thing right? Okay. with the new generation and okay. wanting to be a little bit more inclusive. Uh, many people have started using the term Latinx. Uh, I guess it just depends on how that person identifies. Okay. You know, I, I go by Latina, Latinx, Hispanic, right. Mexican American, <laughs> Chicana. Like Chicana, I have, yeah. I, I have it right. all. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, because I, I, because when I came back, it was like people are using these like pronouns, he, she, like, and so I'm confused. I'm like, this is like. This is new to me in these circles and when you're in these new like progressive things yeah. like people are going around and I'm like pronouns I'm like like I'm Jerome um, I'm a man uh, <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> yeah I'm not I can't even remember like him like so everybody's going in like in circles and identifying this I'm like this is this is different I'm it's like different. what yeah and yeah. everybody is saying different things so I'm like um, I'm Jerome, and yeah, I'm kind of new to this, so, so I don't mean to be offensive, but I'm, I'm a man. I don't know how deep, and then somebody explained it to me. Mm -hmm. But one of the other things, like, I was like, well, I, Latinx, and like, is it is it offensive to say Latino? If it's a group of people, but people's like, well, because of the masculine and feminine thing, which is just a part of the, you know, Spanish language, mm -hmm. it's like, well, if you say Latinx is more neutral, yeah, inclusive, inclusive for everybody, yeah. specifically women, right? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I get it, all right? And so, yeah, so yeah. that's a learning lesson that I had to go through, <laughs> and I'm not afraid to admit it, and you shouldn't too, and thank you, Sandra, for educating us on that. Yeah. Um, but uh, back to what I was saying, you're the first Latinx, Latina, specifically, um, woman to sit on the council in Nashville. You're the first of your family, um, of parents of um, immigrants mm -hmm. to go to college. So just a, you're just a like history in the making uh, right here. And I want people to appreciate that um, and know that. Um, so amongst all these firsts, like how does that like make you feel um, just, yeah. just knowing <laughs> that? Like, uh, it depends on the day, really. <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it's cool when mm -hmm. I sit down and like have time to think about it I, I guess I don't I don't realize sometimes what that means right uh, being the first uh, Latina woman elected to council I'm the youngest person sitting on council I'm the first one in my family to graduate from college right. you know I it's I'm a first generation American it's uh, it's a lot of first um, and uh, it's only when I start talking to other people mm -hmm. uh, that look and sound like me that I realize 
oh, <laughs> this is uh, this is abnormal. <laughs> this is a little, uh, you know, I, right. I I'm becoming um, for better or for worse the the example for a lot of people. Right. Um, and so I have uh, younger people saying, oh, I want to do this one day, or right. I I'm so excited to finally have someone that looks and sounds like right. me in politics and. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of pressure. Sometimes. Right, right. I, like I bet, um, because being the first, you know, in that type of way, it's like you have to kind of figure it out, right? Yeah. Um, it's like you didn't have really any examples or anybody to give you the guidance. It's like I, I had. I well, I did have uh, Fabian Bendy, who was the first mm, Hispanic man right. uh, elected to council. Um, it's a little different. Right. Uh, it, we have similar paths that right. that we have taken. It's just being a brown young woman right. is a whole, whole nother level. Being a woman is a whole yeah. nother <laughs> that I can't understand, right? right. But it's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, I think what's what's interesting about your your story when I think about it, when you talk about the first, many black and brown people are the first in like uh, to do a lot of things just because of how we're just discriminated against marginalized in many ways and just the struggles that the barriers that our our parents has to go through whether being enslaved or immigrating into the country yeah. and not being looked at as you know equals yeah. right and so being the first is just like that just what comes with when you're coming from that kind of background uh from a heritage standpoint yeah. you're gonna be the first of many and you're gonna you gonna it's gonna be a lot of pressure and I, I was looking at an interview you mentioned like you know in the in the um, Latino just family structure you know like your parents want you to do kind of like better than them right mm -hmm. or like just you know progress it and you was like you know you you hope that you, you know you made your parents proud and doing that yeah. um, how, like how are your parents feeling about you now <laughs> like, yeah I mean it it, it is uh, you know with immigrant households you're you're supposed to build on your parents' success so the next generation right. um, has it a little bit easier than you. So my parents immigrated here when they were 15, 16. Mm -hmm. They only made it through fourth grade. Wow. Um, and so, you know, they couldn't sit down at the table and help me with homework or anything like that. Right. So I, it, it's, I don't think they ever thought that it would end up here. Right. Uh, I, because when I was in college and I, I was studying this, I always told them, I'm never gonna go to law school and I'm never gonna run for office. <laughs> and you lied. And I, yeah, I'm meeting my words. <laughs> and uh, you know, I didn't find out until a couple of weeks ago, when I was sitting down um, with my sister, that my dad cried on election night. Wow. It's just in in I, I think it's like this in different households in different cultures as well like you especially in the hispanic culture like you keep all your emotions and and you know all of that bottled up so i didn't even know right uh that that had happened so i uh i hope that they're proud of me and i hope that i'm doing right by them um we i just i've never right had the that type of conversation with them yeah I, I think it's awesome and i think you know representation is important mm -hmm. right and that's why i like i i personally you know i you know i, I chase you down because i really wanted you to yeah. be a part of this because i think it's you know um you mentioned something as far as like you know not really realizing how like big of a deal all the things you've done coming from you know um your family background um, from your parents being immigrants and then, and then to where you are now i think you know, we don't congratulate ourselves enough, right? Uh, because, you know, we can't expect people to give us our flowers, you know, even yeah. though people, should, and so we sometimes, we yeah. have to be more intentional about giving to, giving our flowers to ourselves, mm. right? And congratulating ourselves, you know, you know, probably a lot more about like these big feats that we have. And we probably don't realize until, like you said, we're talking to somebody, then we sit back like, man, that is kind of amazing. <laughs> but, you know, most of us are, you know, hum most of us are humble. So we're not yeah. going around and bragging about it, right? We let everybody else do that. So I, I wanted to personally, you know, make sure on camera that I congratulate you and let everybody know that's watching it. And it may be a young Latino, a young Lat Latina, you know, boy or girl that, uh you can do it too and like you have a perfect example right here 
uh, in front of you. And so, like, just bravo. Just, Thanks. you know, if it was an audience in here, like, I would just tell everybody to start clapping because I think it's a, a really big deal that Nashville has somebody like you, you know, on the council and having that representation. And, like, you was raised here. Like, you were born, yeah. essentially, you moved when you was five, right? Yes. So born and raised here, right? And so in District 30, the, the district in, in that the you district serve. Represent, and yeah. so let's talk about it. Let's talk about how like District 30 is now compared to, you know, kind of how you grew up in District 30. Yeah, so we moved here in the late 90s and I started uh, kindergarten in the elementary school that's in my district. Um, and uh, the population uh, of Hispanic households was growing. Right. So uh, now it, it looks so, so much more um, different. Right. Uh, we were always a pretty diverse part of town, uh, but now it's just boomed. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I think I was very, this was the scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, rejection is not a big thing for me, so I never put myself out there. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, you know, it, I was I was so afraid because these people were my neighbors, right. and uh, I have been there for a little over twenty years, and I'm like, what if they don't want me? Right. Uh, and and um, my my whole goal with running was making sure that you know we had better schools. Um, more money for schools that we had better infrastructure that you know the simple things like sidewalks and libraries and parks and all of that could be taken care of because it, right. it, it has been a very forgotten part of town right. um and so that's still my goal i'm a year in uh <laughs> only a year wow. only a year in uh you know we got hit by a tornado and then we had those winds that knocked out our electricity for a couple of weeks. Everyone forgets about that now. Uh, <laughs> then we had COVID, and, right. and so like timelines have been pushed back. Right. But I, I mean, my whole goal is to, you know, right. try and help out as much as possible as long as they uh, will have me. <laughs> uh, an ideal first year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. An ideal first year. Uh, you know, nothing's going on. Right, yeah. right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like just your campaign journey like and how that experience was running because I know you had worked on campaigns yeah. right but never been the candidate running yeah. and so how, how was that experience for you yeah it, it was very different I mean I had worked a couple of campaigns before and then I was working for I'm working for the Democratic Party and so I've always been around like political people right. uh, since college and um, you know I decided in a choice I sat down <laughs> and uh, people had been telling me for a while and I look over at my coworker and I'm like you know what I, I'm gonna do it um, just because I I wanted I wanted more I wanted right. more for my community and um, it was a decision of am I gonna sit back and hope that someone uh, who understands where the district is right now runs, or am I just going to go ahead and do it because uh, my district's very sleepy and we're, we haven't been very active in many years. Right. Um, so I decided to run. And uh, we knocked six, 7,000 doors. We sent out mailers. We had several volunteers. Um, it was very hard. It was very, right. very hard. Um, I, you know, you get faced with an identity crisis while you're at it. Right. Uh, who am I? Who do the Who do they think I am? Right. Um, I I'm not Hispanic enough. I'm not American enough. Right. I, you know, it, it, I'm a woman. <laughs> right. You're too young. Right. You know, you, right. you get hit with all of it all at once, and um, you know, I I had a. How did you deal with all that? Like, how did you? What? Sometimes like, it wasn't that great, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> to deal right, with that. Uh, right. You know, it. Sometimes it was ugly, um, but um, then there were moments where mm -hmm. where people were like, "This is great. Like, right. um, we need we need more people who who understand to, right. and that run." Um, you know, I I had to have a very strong base of friends. Um, I wouldn't tell my family 
everything that was going on because I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't want them to worry or right. have to um, hear about certain things. Right. Like um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, like what? What is like because I know just because we've talked before at some of the you know, the not so nice things that, mm-hmm. you know, kinda happened during your campaign, but you know, I would like, you know, if you would wanna share like those those stories that you share with me, like with some of the the people that are listening and watching now, because I think it's crucial for people to really understand like what it took for you to be where you're at today, like and, and become, you know, the first, you know, um, Latina woman to be on the council of Nashville. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it's very it's very hard for people who straddle uh, two worlds. Right. Uh, this is what you could say. Uh, Hi everyone, this is Councilwoman Sandra Sepulveda. Come check out Gino's East. Like, let me tell you how, <laughs> let me tell you how monumental, like, I made this pizza. Like, so in Puerto Menes, where I lived in Costa Rica, yeah, you know, they had this pizza place. Uh, and pizza being my favorite food ever in the whole world, um, I would go there and literally I would get like pepperoni and jalapenos, right? And so they have, they eventually just changed the pizza name to the Jerome, <laughs> well, Jerome, right? The Jerome, uh, in Spanish. And so, yeah, so I had my own like pizza in Puerto Menez because I would go there religiously and order the same thing. And then when you like the like only American black guy, like, yeah, <laughs> in this small pueblo, and like, they're gonna name, they, they're gonna name you. you, yeah. Do you ever think about going back and visiting? Oh, or? I'm thinking of going back and living, like, really? I, <laughs> like, and it, like, as you may know, like, it just is a lot of other places outside the United States that are just kind of like, you know more accepting and see more of your value as a person of color yeah uh and i just think the living is just a lot more simple people are just more friendlier and have less like uh and i just like the culture you know i just like i just like the culture i like the just the people's spirits i was talking to someone in uh knoxville and they were telling me um their family is from the same place where my family's from in mexico and um, they were telling me that they wanted to move there and live there. They mm. were, I think they were from here. I don't remember now. But they wanted to go back um, because it, they were like, you know, sometimes you just get tired and you want to be around people who are more accepting and more people that look and sound like you. And uh, um, now I get it. <laughs> Absolutely get it. Like, you don't know that. If you don't like really have that a bi culture experience or have that really too like you don't you wouldn't know how like like liberating and free and what that does for your mental health and physical health like it just does a lot. We just en- eating some of this great pizza, right? We enjoying this pizza. Are you liking the pizza? Yes, Is it good? it's really good. Um, and so I got thin crust this time, y'all. Y'all probably used to me doing the deep dish, but Sandra has the deep dish today. I have the thin crust. We have the exact same thing, just in different, like, <laughs> different forms. Different forms. Um, but um, you was going to tell us about your, you know, some of the maybe not, you know, fonder moments yeah. of your campaign um, mm-hmm. and kind of sort of some of the things that you experienced because of who you are, what you look like, your age and all those things. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I guess the most memorable one was um, when I was knocking on a door. Um, like I was saying, straddling two worlds is, is, is a lot. Right. Um, and so I knocked on someone's door who is um, biracial. And um, she told me that she was voting for the other person. And I said, okay. But she wanted to hear more about the campaign. And uh, she was like, she was like, um, they're, gonna, they're going to eat you alive. Uh, you, uh, you're, you're, you need to become, um, a white woman's pet, uh, because you, you're not, uh, you're not white enough. Wow. <laughs> and she, and then she, she went on to tell me that, uh, how she had to learn how to speak more white, 
uh, to be accepted at work. Uh, but then she had people at church who were black that didn't accept her, and so she had to learn how to speak like them. And so I, she, she was going through her own, you know, Identity. struggles. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it it was so. It was. It was. It it wasn't like it was things I've never heard. Right, right? the code switching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just um, a reminder of what some people are going to think, right. and um, you know, uh, election night. I don't know who this was, but my 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 brother and his uh, girlfriend were uh, working a poll site for me. Uh, she told me that someone drove by and said, uh, F you Mexicans. Wow. Uh, she laughed it off. Uh, uh, you know, it was, it was things like that. And it wasn't only those things, but there have been other situations, yeah. um, throughout the campaign. Um, but you know, it, it was, a there was more in my in my mind there was more um love than hate right and i i have to believe that right right uh, even though it's it's <coughs> some of these things haven't gone away since i've been elected right? wow so you're still receiving some of that i get emails sometimes right and um i don't think people understand some people are flat out races right but I don't but there are also other people who don't understand that what they're saying to me is racist right right <laughs> like um, you know especially during like one of our more controversial votes right you know having someone say um, you know I you betrayed your people and whatnot and that person wasn't even uh, Hispanic. Uh, <laughs> what, so what people are they talking about? <laughs> Hispanic people. Wow. That you betrayed your people. Uh, they're not going to be able to afford this. And, uh, right. you know. Just it, those type it, of things. Yeah. It, it was stuff like that. Like sometimes things that you wouldn't say to, it, to me if I was a white male right. or, or even a white woman right uh, they end up saying to me <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. It, it, it gets it's a, it gets hard right. um, it's um, but I know I'm not the only one that deals with this right um, you know I I've had it hard right but you know we have council members like councilwoman Suara who's the first Muslim woman right like I'm pretty sure she's had it harder right um, other members of the minority caucus right um we talk about things like this because we have to um be a support system for 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 our group because um you know we have great allies but right. you don't understand until you're having to deal with that yourself right and so just having a support system that's reaffirming and right. saying well you know it, it's one person right. or uh, I don't think they understand that what they said to you was right. this right. Um, it, it's helpful it's helpful it's <laughs> it's um, it's the downside to to a lot of things right but um, you know we we have to keep going and we have to keep doing the work right or um, Who's going to be there for for communities that haven't been heard in a while? Right, and so that's you know, <laughs> like you, you you're probably a, a better person than most, <laughs> and your response and like how to deal with that because you know I would probably be trying to use my council member powers it's like let me track this person <laughs> down let me see where they live and let it's me call not, in it's not like we can't look them up <laughs> right I mean, exactly I'm yeah i'm not saying i haven't looked them up mm, she's looking you all up <laughs> she has saying, a, she has a list <laughs> i'm just it, it it helps me understand right, right right a little bit more um i i think it's hard for some people who 
aren't you used to change right, right? Um, and and you know this the part of town that I represent has right. changed so much over the years and right. it's constantly continuing to change right and um, you know we have more and more immigrants coming we have younger families who are moving to the area right. um, sometimes people feel unheard or forgotten right. and I have to remind them that you know I understand right. I have lived here for over 20 years I might be young right but it's not like I don't know right. what has happened over a certain period of time but right. you know we have to welcome in our our new neighbors right and make sure that um, we're all succeeding <laughs> right exactly and so let's let's talk more about like district 30 and kind of like what you envision that looking like you know doing your tenure as a councilwoman for that district and kind of the things you want to do and you want to change yeah I have so many dreams for it. I, I gotta, I gotta, uh, my team tells me I need to uh, narrow it down, focus on getting those things done first. Right, move from right. There. Um, I want a park. Mm. Like, it, it's, it's a simple yet not so simple thing. Right. Um, you know, my, my district, it doesn't have library community center park. Right. You know? uh, Sidewalks. Sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, I want sidewalks. I want a park. I want a free place where children could go. Right. Right. We have the elementary schools, and the elementary schools have tiny playgrounds. But it's it's a different thing having a park right. where a community could go right. and um, you know have a picnic, right? Play some ball, work out, work out. Right. Yeah, it, it, right. It, it builds community. For and sure. um, My district is one of the most condensed districts. Um, you know, our, our closest libraries are, are, you know, a ways away right. and, uh, we are all, I think it, it's around 20 to 30% live at or below the poverty line. And so, you know, not everyone has a car, right. public transportation hasn't been expanded enough in our area. Right. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. in Nashville in general, in, Nashville in, in general, general. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. trying to find something that they they're able to access easily. right um i bought three little libraries okay um i plan to um you know have a fundraiser and build little libraries and put them all across the district and right. put books in multiple languages right and, and stuff like that if they can't get to a library quick enough right i'm gonna make it as accessible as possible right and even parents who who are able to drive their children to the library in my community, it, it, it's a very working class community. Right. So parents get home late sometimes. Right. And they're tired. And right. They can't take their children all the time. Right. So I want to make sure that, you know, we have books everywhere. Right. Um, and that's I think that's important for 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 us as Nashvilleians to realize that every community is not made the same. Right. Yeah. Every community needs different things yes. to be you know effective and and grow mm -hmm. and you know, and have the same type of access, even if it's in a different way, right? Yeah. And so that's a that's a, that's a, that's a important to notice, especially if you don't or never lived in that particular district, you probably wouldn't realize. You would probably think, oh, every community has yeah. a library or at least a park, right? Or these yeah. things that you think every community should just naturally have in the United States of America, right? Or in a city like Nashville, but yeah. that's not the case. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want I want more funding for schools. Right. I, I went to public schools. Here. Right. I had to share textbooks when I was in school. <laughs> They're still sharing textbooks. <laughs> You know, oh, they have good photocopies old, of photocopies. Good and sometimes old they run out natural of paper. public school. <laughs> yeah. You know, you gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I it, it's simple things. Sidewalks, right. you know, um, better, better uh, storm water right. drainage. You know, right. I, it's it's very simple, and and these things could make a world of difference right. in people's lives. Right. Question. Um, because I'm a real big advocate of, uh, you know, of community and like uh, maybe we can figure out a way to do this ourselves. Right. Is there a way if 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 someone started like a park fund to get like a park built in District 30 somewhere? Is that something that is 
possible, doable Sometimes. with zoning. And I'm saying, I know money is like yeah, the yeah. biggest component of that. But if that was possible, could that could that could that work? I'm just not sure how that works with just parks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But we have people who like have private parks that open it up to the communities and right. stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I have been working with a developer who's um, doing some work in the community, and they're gonna build a small pocket park. Okay. And I um, and they are going to open that up to the neighborhood right there. Okay. So at okay. least that small neighborhood has a little place to right. go to. Right. Right. Um, so i mean there's right. partnerships we could all do it, right. it is mainly you know the maintenance of it and right the public works having yeah to you know right okay yeah because you know i just think you know again i don't think many people may be aware of like the um kind of the barriers that you have in district 30 compared to other districts and you know some districts get highlighted more than others mm -hmm. um and you know like you said, 20, maybe even 30% live at the property or underneath the property line. So it just, you know, those voices could, you know, could not be heard a lot of times. And I think that's why it's very exciting and needed to have somebody like yourself at this particular time um, being the council person for that district because you have lived there over 20 years. You did go to the public schools. You did see the, the, the community like kind of in this ups and downward spirals like throughout the years, throughout the 20 years. And so to have somebody like you who's energized, who's young, who's a woman and that's like ready to get mm -hmm. things going, like, you know, I think at some point in time, every community needs that person to kind of lead them into like a new era yeah. uh, of change, right? And unfortunately, we live in America, but in the South and change sometimes, like for some reason, this doesn't, you know, happen fast enough or some people just don't want that and yeah. just want to stick to the old ways. But you know, we need more trailblazers like yourself to, <laughs> to, to make that happen. And like, that's why I love like having persons like yourself on this platform so people can really understand and know, especially people here in Nashville who may not be informed or misinformed on like things that are happening yeah. right here underneath their nose. And like, I think there's a lot of people, if they knew more, they would help. Yeah. And so hopefully like, if you're watching and listening, like that you will reach out to Sandra and like, you know, uh, see what you can do, whether you live in District 30 or not, right? Like, we all a community, we all are Nashvillians, uh, you know, some type of level. So, yeah, like, let's let's get District 30 to where they need to be <laughs> in all the other districts. Like, just like, there's basic things like sidewalks, right? I want to be able to walk and not get hit. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> like, because y'all have, a, like, a uh, the, the intersection, um... It's like it's like one of those intersections that like you know pedestrians could could took a die like yeah. uh, is it Wallace and what is that Nolans what is that uh yeah so we have we have I mean we have Harding Nolansville right and then we have uh, Wallace and Nolansville is right. also another side so, right um, Apache and and Haywood right I, I mean we've had fatalities we've right. had quite a few fatalities right. um, I guess my goal is just trying to get the district in a better place right um you know like i said we're a sleepy district right we're almost always on the low end of voter turnout right my dream before the pandemic was to go door to door registering people to vote um and take uh, the census uh -huh. and all those things yeah and for the people that were already registered say i'm your councilwoman what's going on do you have any concerns and just doing the whole district taking right. a couple of blocks every month right and, until i finish um i mean just right. simple stuff like that it, it it's it's um it's it's tough when um you know we notice other parts of town and right. other neighborhoods and right. how people are a little bit more organized right and, um you know my goal was to have uh, quarterly meetings and have it potluck style we were able to do one and, right and then pandemic hit uh i bet that's an amazing potluck. it was a great potluck I, and so <laughs> i have to say and we talked a little bit about this like so if if <laughs> if you're in nashville right now if you ever visit nashville i think district 30 like has to has like the most like far as like just multicultural like foods and like like just a taste of like of just everything of like just all across like the world in district 30 and so i'm gonna put you on the spot right okay. now i'm gonna put you on the spot 
if you had to recommend anybody to go to, I'm gonna give you top three. So I'm, oh, gonna, I'm gonna make it flexible. So. The top three like restaurant establishments in District 30. In District 30. Specifically, what would they be? Um, and no offense taken to anybody that's not <laughs> mentioned. We, they're all great, but we just want the top three right now. Okay, okay. Um, Las Casuelas. Las Casuelas. Uh-huh. Um, there's a taco truck. It's, it's burnt like twice. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a good... <laughs> is that a... Is that, it's is on fire. Yeah, it's on fire. <laughs> uh, they're rebuilding it right now, but it, it's on the <laughs> I think it's called Las Americas, if I'm not mistaken. Just, just look for the ashes. Yeah, <laughs> it's right across from the Bank of America on Nolansville. Okay. Um, it, it's it's the best taco truck. It's on fire. It's man. on fire. <laughs> uh, they're rebuilding. It, it'll be back. Uh, and uh, Bangkokville. Bangkokville. Yeah. What is, okay, Bang, is that food from, from Bangkok? From it's, it's Thai. Thai, Thailand, yeah. Bangkok. Okay. Hmm, yeah. all right. Shout out that's, to those three. That's yeah. your, that's. Councilwoman Sanchez, top three. I'm putting it on there. Top, top three in District 30. So go, go, yeah. go eat there in the taco truck. You know, once you, it's back, once it's back once it, once it's bring back. your extinguisher, but also bring your appetite because you don't know. It's, it's bomb. <laughs> oh, okay. How, um, how can people reach out to you to learn just more about your district, or if they want to volunteer, intern? Um, and you know, you know, um, donate do, to your yeah. fundraiser or anything. How can people do that? Always need interns. Um, I have a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always need interns. Um, uh, a lot of our our projects have been on hold because of the pandemic. Right. Um, so we're hoping to have those going right. in, in the future. Um, but volunteering and all of that, I would love volunteers. Right. I am on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, I have a website, you name a platform, I'm probably on it, uh, you know, at you, my phone number, I, I give my cell phone number to everyone, it's 615-389-2795, you could also email me, uh, sandra.sepulveda at nashville.gov, um, you know, I, I have a lot of emails, but I, I, I'll get, I'll get, to, I'll get to them, I'll get to them, um, Cell phones the the easiest way to the fastest way, um, and sometimes you have to call me as as you well know. As I know, you have to you gotta you gotta be consistent. <laughs> She's very busy. She's trying to make our communities here in Nashville better. So yeah. it's just call her, keep calling her. She doesn't take offense to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. no She's... people have to remind me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, those are the fastest ways to get in touch with me. I try and. Um, put updates uh, on those platforms Perfect. and uh, I try to do bi-weekly newsletters um, you know after a lot of this is, is right. over with um, we're, we're we, hitting the ground running and right, so right. I would love help um, anybody that's good in digital organizing <laughs> right I think like yeah intern with Sandra she's great she's a great person inside and out um, I've enjoyed this, um, and this is just a snippet, right? This is not everything that she that she does or going to do. So I encourage everybody to reach out to Sandra and get to know her more. You know, she loves pizza, so you know, treat her to some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but like, definitely, just learn more about her story. And for anybody that's watching, it may be a first or in their families right yeah. and um you know this is a great example of you know what a first look like and be historical um and it just it just makes me happy uh we share a lot in common and uh as far as just being first and you know i'm proud to say that i've actually been able to live and be immersed <laughs> in um latin community um and you know different in Central America and South America, so um, we were just talking about, you know, making tamales and yeah. <laughs> shout out to the, all the tamale makers out there using those to raise money for whatever programs in, in the community. So um, I, this is this is great. I appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to continue eating this pizza. And um, yes, you know, if you want some too, come on down to Geno's East in Nashville. Did you like the pizza? It was yes, great. It was good. It was good pizza. It's top. Just add it to her list. Even though it's not District Thirty, we can add Geno's in, in in the list and you know have a a bonus top special for Geno's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. That's it. 
Sandra, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, see y'all next time. And we're going to enjoy this pizza. Sorry you can't have any at this particular moment. So, all right, cool. Thank you. This was thank excellent. Thank you. No, this was good.